Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. I am Chelsea Smith. I am your Learning Development Specialist here at Action Benefits, and I am going to walk you through using Coverage for One to explore doctors and medications and how to get your beneficiaries enrolled in some of those plans using this software. So I'm going to switch over to share my screen right now, and I'm going to turn off the camera only because the way that the camera is set up in Zoom, sometimes it'll block the things I'm trying to show you. So I'm just going to turn myself off, and a lot you'll see me seeing a lot of this while I look <laughs> at what the uh, what I'm doing. So I'll just save you guys the the hassle there of having to see that. So this is what you will see if you start your Coverage for One journey just by going to the Coverage for One website. When you get to the Coverage for One website, if you just type in coverageforone.com, this is where you are going to end up, right? So if you scroll down a little bit here, these are these two links is are where you could get to your um, Medicare or under 65 enrollment links if you wanted to go that way without hitting up the dashboard first. But a lot of us are going to want to click right here. Your button's going to look a little different because you're using the not training space to get this done. So your button's going to look a little different. But my button, because I'm training, looks a little different. So you would click there and log in. And I will spare you the um, details there. Just put in your login information. And you will come up to the dashboard, which looks like this. So we're focusing more on the Medicare side of our show today, but this is what your dashboard would look like if you were going to use that without going directly to the Sunfire link like I had mentioned in the other um, screen there. So this would be where you would start an off-marketplace quote if you wanted. You could do the on-marketplace right here, and then you could start a Medicare quote right here. This is where you contact the lovely individual team if you had any questions for them. This is where you can also see your book of business for off marketplace is in the center area right here. And then some countdowns for um, OEP and AEP if you just wanted to keep that front of mind right there. If you wanted to share your custom site with any of your clients, your C for one stuff, you would click right here and it would give you that site address that you could copy or share onto Facebook. And we will get more into the customer side of Coverage for One later in our show. Um, it'll be the first time I'm demoing that portion of the um, tool to you guys, but I do plan on doing that later on today in our demo. But if that is one of the ways that you could share this link is by clicking that button there, hitting copy, or if you wanted to go directly to Facebook, you could hit that button too. So this is where you're going to start um, for your journey to, and pick what, which marketplace you'd like to go on to start these quotes. If you were in the non-training environment, which you will be, you would be clicking on any one of these three and you'd be taken to either the marketplace um, with Stride or the Sunfire portion with Medicare. I can't use these links, so I have to just click over here to get you over to the Sunfire side of Coverage for One. If you had clicked on just this link here, it would take you to a Sunfire login. So make sure that you have that Sunfire um, login information handy when you go to use Coverage for One so that you can get that into that portion very seamlessly. But because we're focusing on the Medicare portion of our show today, this is what you are going to, but we're going to spend most of our time in here. So I'm going to put it on the full screen for you just so it's a little easier for you to see. Um, there's multiple ways to do a lot of the things you're going to want to do in coverage for one. <clears throat> so I kind of like to use these dots over here in comparison to the buttons up top, but that might just be personal preference or I'll, I'll make sure I show you both. So if you wanted to go through your contact information, you would click this button here. And you could either search your contacts by first, last name, date of birth, or you could use this button down here to add a new contact. To go back, you just go and click on this home button here. 
any contact that you've talked to recently will show up in the contact 30 days portion of your screen right here. But if you wanted to view some of those older contacts, you could just click right there. And then if I had, because this is the training environment, I don't have tons of contacts available uh, in here, but you could click by letter to get to any list, one of your contacts that you would like. And then like I said before, um, it will show you, if you click on these three dots here, ways to view the entirety of the contact, start a quote for the contact, send that PURL to your contact, or send a scope of appointment to that contact, which we'll get to in just a moment here. And if this person is enrolled in someone you've already worked with and enrolled them in a plan, it will say right here under the disposition that you have enrolled them in something. And if you click the dot for that person, you can then go ahead and view that enrollment here. If you click on it, it would send you to that person's enrollment. Um, let's hit into sending a scope really quick. Um, there's two ways that you can do that. You can either, like I've said before, click on this button here, these three dots, and it would send a scope of appointment specifically to that individual that you are um, clicking on here that's, whose dots are next to that name, I should say. So for, as you can say, I was playing with it yesterday to make sure I still all worked, and you would just click on this one, it would send it to me. If you just wanted to send a scope, um, will know without using that contact information, you could do that as well by hitting the send a scope button up here. Um, I will walk through the scope of appointment process with you from this vantage point. So as I click on this button here, it shows us kind of like a scope of appointment dashboard. And if I had any scopes of appointment that were floating around in space that I had not yet signed, or if my clients had not yet signed, this is where they would show up in this section here. I'll show you that in a moment when I demo the scope of appointment. You'll see that it comes up right here. So you have four different ways that you can send a scope of appointment to your clients use it from this screen. So you can email that scope of appointment to that client by hitting email. Text obviously is going to send them a text. That one's really cool. Um, I've used that one myself a couple of times. I don't want to demo it today just because I have to sit and wait for the text to come through sometimes and I'm in the different part of the building and sometimes I don't get signal as fast as I'd like. So I'm going to skip the text one, but I highly recommend that one. That one's really cool. Um, and then you can complete a scope right there live with your client. So if you have, um, if you're at a marketing meeting or a marketing event, I should say, um, and you want to complete that scope with the person sitting right there with you and you have your tablet or the your laptop, you could do it that way. Or you could, if you're a pencil and paper, pen and paper kind of gal or guy, you could use this upload scope button here and it would allow you to upload a file from your computer into um, this tool so you can have that scope on hand. I highly recommend doing this because now you know that you have that um, 10 years that you are required to keep that um, paperwork on hand taken care of because CoverTro One will keep you compliant and hold that data for you for that 10 plus years that you need. So then you don't have to worry about it. Um, so of course, you I like that it's very customizable here. You can do it any way you'd like. Um, if your client is a paper pencil person, you could totally do that. So let's complete a scope together really quick. Like I said, I'm just going to do the complete scope here just so I can walk you through that process. But when you click that here, it will give you a scope of appointment form, a digital one. So I really like coverage for one too because it forces you to remain compliant. At no portion will it allow you to do something that is non-compliant. So the first thing it's going to do is make sure that you are selecting the type of products that you want to discuss with your um, client. And so I always suggest to check all of them. That way you are covered. And if your client cho changes their mind and wants to talk, say, med subs instead of standalones, whatever, um, you have yourself covered. You don't have to have them sign a new scope, right? 
So then at this point, you would fill in the information for that beneficiary. I'm not going to save you the trouble of watching me type, um, put that information in there for you. And then it will ask you to put in the initial method of contact. I'm just going to put walk in for our purposes today. Um, then it would ask you the type of plans that you represent during this meeting. I, again, just like earlier, highly recommend that you just put in all the plans that um, are available to you. So that, that way you, again, don't have to go back and rewrite a new scope if you um, your client goes in another direction and really wants to say a UHC when they sweared, swore up and down that they were gonna be a Blue Cross person, you have yourself covered. And then put in the date. Today is the 7th, if I remember correctly. Beautiful. And then you can go ahead and have the person sign. Um, if you're using like a tablet or whatever, you would use your finger. I'm going to use the mouse and I practiced this earlier today. So hopefully it doesn't look too silly, but then you can just go ahead and with your mouse do the signature. Okay, not my best, but respectable, right? So then you just hit save. That signature is saved. And then you would come down here and you would save that scope of appointment. So it will then confirm, yes, you have created a scope of appointment for this client. Now it is your time to shine, dear agent. Now this is when you would go ahead and sign that scope of appointment. So once you hit OK, it will save. And we, as we talked about earlier, it will come back to your kind of scope of appointment dashboard. It will tell you the type of appointment and also notice that it kind of, it now knows that you're talking just about this particular client. So it will throw that client's name up here in the contact portion of our show up here at the top. And now you know you can, you're talking about that client. You can view the scope right here if you click view. And then all the way on the right hand side where it says sign, you just click sign and that's it. That's all you need to do to sign it because um, Coverage for One has set up a, in your settings portion down here in the agent profile, it has already set up a signature for you when you first created this account. So the, all you have to do is hit sign the one time for yourself. And every time you sign, hit that button, it just counts as that signature. And then that um, scope of appointment will stay on file under this particular contact for that 10 years that you would need to um, have that scope on file. And then of course you can send another one up here with these buttons, however way you choose, if you do end up needing to get another scope of appointment for that client. So that pretty much covers everything about scopes. Um, let me check the chat really quick to see if there's any questions before I keep on with the next portion of our show. Okay, looks like we're all good. Again, please feel free. This is your guys' demo. This is your time to get familiarized with the product. So please, at any time, interrupt me with questions. I'm more than happy to answer them for you. So now that you've got that scope taken care of, you can go ahead and go back to our regular dashboard and you can see that it added an additional contact into our contact 30 days list because even though I use the same name over and over again, um, it is a different client, right? So it was added to our 30 days list over here. So now let's get into the quote and enrolling portion of our show. So there's, again, just like last time, there's a couple different ways you can do this. If you already have the client in front of you and you would like to quote with them there, you could go to your list of contacts in 30 days, or if you, like we just did earlier, filled out that scope of appointment with that client. You could just click on these three dots, hit start quote, and you wouldn't have to fill that information in again a second time for that person. But let's say you are just curious, you're um, doing what I do all the time, to be honest, and just kind of get interested and wanna surf around without having a name attached to this, you could do that. I just am going to make sure I select new contact up there. And then you just hit the quote and enroll button right here. And it's going to take you to a customer lookup portion of our show. 
And again, it's going to force you to remain compliant. So anytime one of these blue boxes comes up with a checkbox, that is a kind of script for you that prompts you to say um, what you need to say to remain to your client to remain compliant. So then you would check this box and let them know, hey, to get started, we need to get this information from you. Check that box. Uh, I remember last time I did this demo, someone was curious about um, making sure if you could uh, run these quotes without the Medicare number right off the get. And you absolutely can do that if you just um, put in a zip code. I'll just put the one we're in right now just for sake of our sh um, of keeping this pony in the water. Um, it will let you do that. You can just hit look up and then keep going from here. So we'll do it this way this time, just so I do it a little different. Um, you can hit what's available and it will tell you how many carriers, how many plans are represented in case you're on the phone with them. This will be helpful for you. And then um, if you wanted to put in the Medicare number at this point in the date of birth of the client, I suggest doing that at this point. But you, again, you don't have to if you're just doing what I'm doing and just poking around. Um, you don't need to do that. But, you know, good time to do that now. So then you would select the type of plans, um, types that you'd like to talk about with your customer. Let's just start with MAPDs. Um, it will ask you if you're currently enrolled in a Medicare Advantage or prescription drug plan. I like to just keep it as meta as possible when I do this first one around, so I'll just say I don't know. This is the point where if you um, had a doctor, that uh, primary care doctor, you could put that in at this point. Um, it lets you search through them. You don't have to put one in right now. Again, I suggest that you do that if you're sitting with a client, that way you get the most accurate information that you can. But if you're just playing around, um, you don't need to put that in for right now. Um, I'm gonna do this right now, again, just for sake of doing it a little differently than last time. I'm going to leave stuff as uh, blank as possible so I can show you how to add those things in later if you so choose. So it'll ask you how often the person thinks that they're gonna use the plan. Next, you could put in any pharmacy medic and medications that this person might use. And again, I'm going to leave that blank for now. But if you're with a client, good idea to put those in there at this point. And then this is where it kind of helps you be a great agent. You can ask it to focus on some other aspects for your client. So let's say your client really um, is into that transportation portion. Maybe they, you know that this person is no longer able to drive or they live in a city that they are, where drivable is not an option for them. And you know that that um, transportation thing is gonna be very, very valuable to them. You can check that box there. Some of these other things that you can check are going to come out in the wash anyway, um, due to the medications you might put in, right? Like the insulin thing, you're gonna put that insulin in at the pharmacy, but Maybe insulin is still important to them because they, they don't take it right now, but might worry that they might take it in the future. You could check that insulin savings there as well, vision, not so on and so forth. You can check up to three of those, but I'm going to leave it blank for now just um, so you get that cleaned down. So then you go ahead and hit, hit view plans. And there you have it. It will bring up plans in your area, because again, we are not searching as a, for one of our clients, we're just looking at this as a broad lens. So it does have a rating system within itself um, where it lists plans that it thinks are best fit for your client um, first and then goes down as it so chooses. So because we put in so little about this person. It doesn't have a ton to go off of. So it's kind of recommending just a blanket, you know, part B give, give part B give back, excuse me, sorry, um, zero premium plan here. Um, just, but if we put in more information and we can see there, and I'll show you in a second, it does change um, its recommendations based on the information it gives you. So at this point, um, there's a lot of, uh, customizing you can do 
within this portion to get a, to change what plans it recommends for you. So let's say on this left-hand side here is kind of all those filters, kind of like Renzi of Amazon or any other shopping experience, which is nice. Um, let's say your client really, really only wants to see priority. Check the priority box. Now it took away all those um, plans that are not priority and gives you a first recommendation of this particular priority plan um, off the get. And then down here, you can see the other plans that it also are makes available to you, but it's not recommending them as strongly. So it's leaving them or collapsed. And then you can just click the little carrot here, let's say, and show the rest of those details on the priority plans. So you could also then uncheck, turn it back to the way it was. You could filter by different um, things that person values. Again, so let's say they really want a Part B give back plan. You could check that. And now it is only showing you, it doesn't change the recommendations it looks like because it was recommending Part B give back plans in the first place. But let's try one and see if changing the filters to dental Nope. All right. So it stays the same for those these particular plans in this particular area. But as you saw earlier, you can just switch brands and it'll change the filter. So while I have this one out like this without the, um, I have them all collapsed, I should say, they did change how to show and display the um, overhead view of the plans from last time I showed it to you guys. So I just wanna check it one more time to make sure you um, feel confident when you go out there looking at these quotes. So the name of the plan is here, um, the carrier, the star rating is all over here on this side. And then it kind of divided it into an easy to, easier to read, I think it's easier to read, chart for you. So the monthly premium is here. The next is the estimated annual cost um, for your client. And again, this number will change as you add um, you know, doctors, medications, so on and so forth. These numbers can change um, and these recommendations will change. Uh, the part B, this portion is whether or not the plan offers a part B give back. So if this is blue, it means that plan has a part B give back. Dental vision hearing, all of these have all of those. So all of these are checked here. So D, dental, V vision, you know the drill. Um, the over-the-counter benefits, in blue here, checked both of those. And then you have the transportation benefit is listed here as well. And if either of these plans had a transportation benefit, that would be listed all the way over here to the right. So a little different than when I showed you guys this last time, but I think it's cleaner, a little easier to read. So let's say your um, client was really interested in getting some more details about this plan. You can hit this little carrot here. It drops down a little bit more details about the plan. So now you have the out-of-pocket max in front of you, the medical deductible, the drug deductible, estimated cost summaries, primary care copays, specialist care copays, um, dental vision, over-the-counter benefits. You already saw that in that uh, columns. But it is now here with a little bit more detail. Again, if we had um, that pharmacy benefit, um, if we had those uh, medications put in there, you could click, it would show those here. You also can just click there. Why, you know, we already clicked. Let's just go ahead and do it. So let's put in a prescription just so you can see what happened. Maybe the, I like this too, because yes, um, I always recommend putting them in right off the get so you get the most um, clear picture of what's best for your client as possible. But if you're me and you're, you can be scatterbrained sometimes, you might forget that your medication changed, right? Or maybe, oh my gosh, I totally forgot that I take that um, over-the-counter inhaler sometimes. So I haven't taken it in a while. I forgot about it. No problem. We can add it right on here. So it'll ask you to put in the medication name. Um, you can also change the pharmacy here too. I forgot to mention that. But you can change the pharmacy here too. Add in the medication. It will tell you the most common dosage. You just select the dosage the packaging, the refill quantity, how often it gets refilled. And then you just hit add medication right here. 
And then you can continue to add more as you need to. But let's just add the one. We don't want to watch me keep putting medications in here. So we'll hit save. Oh, we'll hit save. It'll do a little more math for us. Which I love that, that we can do that there. And offer a new recommendation based on that added in pharmacy and new drug. So now that we've added a drug in there. It says one out of one drugs are covered and it'll give an estimated annual cost of that drug and even give you some recommendations for, hey, here's a pharmacy that might make this cost a little less. You can go ahead and change that pharmacy if you want, find a different pharmacy or find a mail, throw in that mail order pharmacy. Boom. Takes a second to load, but then it'll show you different drug costs but oh no, that drug isn't covered mail order. No biggie, you can change it back. You can find a new pharmacy in your area there. Just changing that. Just get a new pharmacy. Does it again. Does it faster than I could do it, I tell you what. Boom, lower drug cost. One out of the one drugs covered again. So you can play with the um, pharmacy. You can play with the drugs. Same with doctors, right? So let's add in a doctor. Let's say, oh my gosh, I totally forgot my doctor's name. But now talking about my prescriptions has jogged my memory. And I remember my PCP. You can add in your PCP. Does it again. And I don't know if you saw that earlier, but it does let you add in specialists too. So you can, let's say you really want to keep your PCP, but also are really interested in keeping your homologist, something, whatever, you can add those in as well. It also will tell you, I'm glad I picked this plan then. Um, this plan allows out-of-network doctors, it will give you that information as well. So I love that you can play with all this right there in the quote function itself. You don't need to go back and alter the personal code or alter the contact per se. You can just do it right here on the screen. You can do it here too, um, up here, another button. Uh, in general, in coverage for one, if there's ever any um, changes, you could do things, it's usually up here. And if you get lost within the... Um, plan itself, the quote itself, you can just come up here. Okay. So let's say now that you've added all this information, um, this per, your client's like, you know, I really want to think about it for a bit. Can I have these emailed out to me? Yes, you can. I love this feature because again, not all carrier um, coding tools have this feature. So you can hit compare email right here and it'll pick this particular plan. And you could email just this plan to that person. Or you could hit compare email down here. Check this plan too. You can have up to three. And then you can either hit the compare button. It'll load the details for you and show all the details side by side. Going down, so on and so forth. Lots of different details here, like your chiropractic services, dental services. Goes on for a while, you know. Good to have all that stuff there. And roll button right there if you wanted to use that, which we'll do that in a moment. You can hit over here with the drug cost, drug cost details. Love that feature for us too, especially with all those changes coming up with the drug coverage in the near future for us. Hit back, you can select more. If you hit this email button, if you have a um, contact selected, it would then automatically just email it to that contact um, using that button there. But we don't have a um, contact we're using, so we would have to put in an email address but I'm sure you can handle it. Let's just cancel that for now. But that is the um, list version of our um, enrollment tool. If you go to the x-ray version, I like this one as well for getting a little more into the nitty gritty of the details of each particular plan. Um, if you hit the x-ray version, it kind of changes it a little. So then it puts the overall list of plans over here on the um, left hand side and then it gives you a, um, just more details about the coverage for um, 
coverage available. See, now you can see that this is a tier two generic drug um, in those benefits. You can see the check marks here. Some of it was already covered in that like chart we saw earlier with the blue check marks. This one gives in, a, like I said, just a little bit more detail. So now we can see that fitness benefit. We can see those mental health care benefits are available in this plan as well. Um, and then some of that notable additional services. So like that co-payment for a nursing hotline or a fitness benefit. Um, any sort of details that might not make or break the decision for your client, but might be good to know, might help them out a little bit, um, whether or not there's meal benefits in here, so on and so forth. So max out of pockets, out of, um, combined max out of pockets. You can scroll for a while, it'll tell you a ton, right? So those drug costs by pay period, I think this is kind of cool too. It breaks down monthly totals of um, drug costs. So as you know, as their um, clients maybe hit different um, coverage points, that cost might change. You can have them show that or show that to them as well. Maybe some other perf um, you could add that pharmacy, dental, vision, hearing down here. If you go all the way to the bottom, you can find the summary of benefits, evidence of coverage, and star ratings in English and Spanish. Benefit details up here as well. So some of those ground ambulance, ambulance services. Lots of details in here. Again, some of these might not be those make or break details, but good to know, right? And then the drug cost detail thing here as yeah, so well. Breaks down month to month how much those drugs might cost. All right, so that's x-ray mode in case you wanted a little bit more details there. Um, and I forgot to say, but I wanna make sure I say this as well here. If you are not in the list, if you're not in x-ray mode and in that list mode, if you hit details, you can get some of this stuff this way too. So I. That's the other cool part about coverage for one. You can kind of find the way that locating this information is um, easiest for you and just make it work for you, right? Um, so let we can also go into Part D plans here. It'll give you the available plans. Collapse just like before. The monthly premium right here. Estimated drug costs and deductible if that is a, um, a thing that that plan has. And then just like in the Medicare Advantage uh, plan types, you can just hit the carrots and it'll give you all the same type of details. Change those details within here too. MedSups, take a view of those really quick. Again, they will list all of the ones that are um, available. Same thing here. Um, you can filter by maybe the premium, maybe the um, carrier. You can filter by what, uh, which sub plan they would like. Now let's just look at plan A. And then if possible, it will allow you to enroll in um, that plan directly from the screen here. And then same thing, Medicare Advantage um, without the Part D is available there. And then you have your SNPs. If that person qualifies for a SNP, you can just hit that radio dial and you can see all the SNP lands. Um, oh, you can also toggle down here by um, policy type. So network type, if that was a thing that, the, that applies. All right, so I think I've covered everything in this screen. I'm gonna check the chat really quick and make sure we don't have any questions before we keep on keeping on. And if you have any questions now about the um, quoting portion, now is the time because we're about to get into that enrollment portion of our show. Okay, it looks like we don't have any questions, but um, please send them my way if you do. Okay, so let's say this person really wants this plan. Now we're heading into the enrollment portion. I bet you figured out what we're gonna do. We're gonna hit that green enrollment button here. This would go a little differently 
if you already had that contact selected, um, because you've already in, entered in some of that information, but since we didn't, it's gonna look a little bit different for us. So we'll just go through it this way. So again, if, um, remember that blue button, or I'm sorry, blue box, when um, you see one on your screen, that is like your script to keep you compliant. So you're gonna look at that and it says, it's important you understand the benefits included in your plan. Would you like to review them again before we continue? So check yes, that you did that. The person says, nope, I'm good. We don't need to review them. Then you can just keep on keeping on with the show. If they said, oh my gosh, I totally forgot. Is my prescription covered? You can click review benefits and you can talk through um, any portion of the benefits that you would like in the screen here. And then you have check boxes to say, hey, I know we talked about these things again, just to be safe. So then once you have those checked, you can hit X. And then this person says, do you understand? I'm gonna say that we do. Go ahead and hit next. So now this is kind of like the enrollment stuff. Some of this, like I said before, if you were using a contact would not need to be filled in again. But since we didn't do that this time, we're going to um, fill this in this way. You can do the power of attorney toggle up here if you needed to. First and last name, I'm gonna try my best to fill this in as quickly as possible so you don't have to watch me type for too long. But then you'd enter in the person's date of birth, gender, their phone number. You can see if the person wants to get the plan materials via email the person's address. Is your person's mailing address different from the permanent? No. Um, just like any other, anything on the internet, really, the um, that asterisk means you need to fill this out to continue. So do you want to specify race and ethnicity? You don't have to, but you know that it can sometimes be beneficial to do that. Preferred languages and any alternate formats you might need, then hit next. Oh, I didn't realize I typed 2024, my bad. It, like I said, I do actually, I always like, honestly, when I make oops, because it will show you and prove to you that it will not let you do things that are not compliant, which I love. Just keeps you out of trouble. Okay, so I have to enter in the Medicare number really quick, but I uh, can't do that in front of you. So I'm going to take the screen away for one second. Um, and you're just going to have to look at that beautiful view of the Stanley Hotel that is from the Stanley Hotel um, in Colorado while I put in the Medicare number. You ever have a chance to go to the Stanley Hotel or go to Colorado, I highly recommend it. Once you put in the, that information, and then you put in the effective dates as well, but I can't um, do that in front of you because then I'll show you the date for this Medicare number. But then you would put in the first of the next month probably, but not always. Okay, so I did that. So pardon the interruption, but there we go. So I put in that medic, that number and that date. So are you enrolled in state Medicaid assistance programs? At this point, if you said yes, you would put in the person's Medicaid number. Then it will ask you to select which enrollment period this person is in, um, IEP or SEP. If you select SEP, it will ask you what they're experiencing. So let's just say that they're, um, they lost employer coverage. And then you could put in the date there. We'll just say that they, retired today. Must be nice, huh? All right, so then it'll give you the proposed effective date, which would have been the same as probably most of the time the date that you put up there earlier. We have any other prescription drug, drug coverage when this becomes effective, as we know for um, credible care. Currently a resident in a nursing home, uh, medical insurance, and is your spouse gonna work? Answer all those questions, hit next. It is going to ask you again to put in a PCP. Um, you don't have to, as you know, it will give one for you. But let's just put in one 
just to speed up this here, selecting that location, PCP ID. Are you currently a patient of them? We're just gonna say yes. Oh, I forgot to hit this one up here, I'm sorry. So have we discussed the benefits? Um, yes, and do you understand this is a plan that has a contract with the federal government and it's not a Medicare supplement plan. So again, all that stuff that you need to remain compliant. Then you would select how this person would like to pay. Um, I always like to select Social Security just because. Okay, so one, now that you have all of the information in there, it'll give you any final moments to make sure this is all correct. Look at the agreement, acknowledge it. And then again, this is where you would have a your client sign. Um, and then just like that scope of appointment, you can sign either your text, email, e-signature, or the signature pad. I'm just going to do the signature pad for sake of brevity. Um, but I, if I were doing this in real life, totally would use the text message or email feature. That is really cool. Um, so then you can watch me sign one more time. Maybe I'll do better this time. Nope, looks like I'm not. Okay, save the signature and then submit the quote. Or, I'm sorry, the enrollment. Takes a second. That's how you know that we are making sure you're totally compliant. I'll take a second while it thinks about it. Boom, there you have it, folks. So you have the um, success up here, the date, an enrollment code. You can send an email confirmation if you want. This is where it would start that HRA if you were still interested in doing that with your client gives you a PDF of all this information right here, which I think is super important because then you can send that off to the client if you wanted to. Gives a bunch of um, double check of all that information you put in earlier. And that signature there. Good stuff, guys. So then if you wanted to go back, you can hit close. Now we're back at our contract or uh, context screen again, that, that dashboard screen. And now we had one more enrollment on our belt. Cool, so let me check the chat to make sure I don't have any other questions before we continue, but I am going to get you um, a little bit of a other end view, right? Um, seeing how your clients would experience this um, coverage for one journey. But let me check the chat really quick first. Still no questions, huh? You sure? Nobody wants to talk to me? Okay, that's fine. I get it. So just to show you the um, uh, client side, um, I really like to talk about how valuable the portion of letting people explore on their own really is. Um, because I know, I think it was, I was reading an article the other day, and like 40% of people like to kind of peruse, um, purchasing something on their own before they go and get help in doing that thing. And I am 100% as a millennial, 100% that person too. I love researching something before I go get help from someone because I really don't like going into something blind. So this would be the way that you would make it really easy for your clients to do this. Um, we mentioned it earlier on that dashboard, but you also could use this PURL too. So you would hit the copy right here, and then it would take you to, if you copied and pasted it in, it would take you to this. Um, yours would have your um, agency stuff on it. But this is what they would see, right? Your clients could pick one of two options here. They could either hit help me choose. If you hit that button, it's going to ask them to enter in a lot of information, just like as you probably are aware of that kind of enrollment process, similar to what we had already just did. But for brevity's sake, I'm just going to search by zip code because honestly, to you know, path of least resistance, that's probably what your clients are going to do. Oftentimes, to be honest, that's what I would do if I was given this by an agent. Um, I was a client. I would just put in my zip code and see the plans, click um, that. And then similarly to our end, it will load up this. 
I like that it walks my clients through too. So if you need help, it'll tell you, it'll prompt you again, like, hey, it's probably a good idea to put in these things so we can get a more accurate plan for you. Once they click through all these, then they can do just like you were doing. They can filter by brand, premium, um, policy type, all that jazz. All the same information is right here. I'll put it in full screen for you. I forgot to do that. Now it's a little easier for you to see. So it puts all of that out there for your clients to look at. And if you're me, this is the part where you would add, you would go, hmm, okay. Like it's trying to estimate some stuff for me, trying to give me some uh, more information. And maybe it'd be a good idea for me to add in my medication. So I go ahead and click up here to add in my medication and I'll just add in albuterol just like last time just to show you that it's exactly the same as what you see. Add all that stuff in, add the drug, um, hit next. It also will ask you to add a doctor. Let's just add one. Yeah, up to 20. It's, so it's notice it's asking you very similar questions to what you had. Add in your pharmacy. And then you can skip this. And here's where the magic comes in. So it gives you a quote, right? Now it's, now it's definitely adjusted that quote again to show you something different. Now that we've added in a doctor and some medications. And this is where it, um, it comes in handy for you as the agent to retain that client, right? Because if you come up here, It'll say, it'll have this code for your client. And let's say they call you or they try to get a hold of you. You can then ask them to provide you this code here and hit copy. The Zoom thing kept going over me. Okay, so you would then go back to your coverage, to your um, Sunfire thing here, and then you could right up here, personal code, apply the code. And now you are going to pick up wherever that client left off, right? So now that information is already entered in there. Super cool. Pharmacy, albuterol, drugs, all that stuff. Anything that they put in is already in, in there for you. And then you can view exactly what they were viewing and be right on the same page as them. I think that is so cool. Because again, like if you're someone like me and you want to start on your own before um, you get with an agent or with someone else, someone else's help, that person can do that. No problem. You get that code. You can see exactly where they left off. Um, see this little gear thing? Click. Oh, I have a chat in the way. And then it is um, right here. So you would just click this. Boop. It'll copy it right over. So that's super. I love that. I think that's the, honestly one of the coolest features that we offer um, with this tool. And you want to get started on this, contact your account manager and they can get you started with a um, an account. Get yourself going on it, experiment with it. On YouTube, I have some very little clips on how to do these things. Um, they're all within five minutes or less that can give you like, you know, working on this later and you're like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot how this, the scope thing works. No biggie, I get you. Um, hard to remember all this stuff. Uh, there are videos on YouTube, less than five minutes in a playlist that can walk you through those portions. All right, so um, that brings us to about the top of the hour. Other than that, I'll stick around for a few more minutes in case you guys have any questions, but that's coverage for one. Um, seriously, thank you so much for spending some time here with me today, getting to know our enrollment and quoting tool. And um, have a great AEP OEP, guys.